Welcome to FOB TV, the future of business. I'm your host, Kevin Benedict, and I want to thank each of you today for being here with me. Our topic today is really the complexity around these emerging variants of COVID-19. Now, I'm not an expert. I'm not a doctor. I'm not a medical anything. So don't listen to me on that. But what I do um, for my day job is I become intimately involved in the processes of different things and what's, what are the complexities behind them. We get to study a lot of that in the course of our work. So let's just talk about some of those complexities we're seeing coming out of these variants. It used to be there was COVID-19 and the whole world could deal with and focus their attention on one virus out there that was wrecking havoc across the globe. But today we have a different, very inf uh, increasingly infectious variant of COVID-19 out of the UK. We have another uh, variant out of um, South Africa. And each of these variants are adding complexity to the mix. Suddenly you're not just trying to vaccinate against one kind of COVID, but you have multiple kinds of COVID and some of the vaccines are more effective than others against it. So now the choices that nation states and regions have to make are which one, not only which vaccine is available to us, but which vaccine is available to us and most effective against that particular variant. So let's just think through some of the complexity here. If you have one, you know, if you have one COVID-19 virus, you know that you can focus all your research on it. You can develop a, a, a test vaccine, uh, vaccination. You can then test that on a, a group of people. You get the results back. And if they're highly effective, then you can ask for permission or get certified out there by the various governments to distribute it. So, but now there's more than one. So now it's not just one research and testing effort. It's all these different research projects and testing projects. They're on different time frames. They require different kinds of manufacturing, different kinds of supply chains. Some require a lot colder refrigeration than others. Some last longer than others. So all of these, and suddenly you have five, six, seven, eight, whatever the number ultimately is of different variants that we have to deal with. They have different um, so there's not one vaccine, there's maybe vaccines and boosters and they have to be treated different. And instead of us as individuals and in, out there worrying about, oh, this, with this vaccine, I get one shot with this other vaccine, we get first shot, then a second shot. Well, down the road, we may end up getting the first shot and the second shot and then coming back every few months for a booster to deal with the latest infectious variant. So there's that complexity out there. And for different variants, not only do you have different supply chains, different uh, distribution, different kinds of uh, storage requirements, different kinds. There's also, because some of the variants are more infectious than others, one mask might be not enough. Now CDC is starting to talk about the need for two different kinds of masks or two masks. So just to double up on your protection there. So there's now going to be different safety requirements. Depends on what the dominant variant is in your region. So I just want to flag these out so we think about it. Because if one variant is far more infectious, suddenly the requirements for social distancing, for personal protective equipment, for everything changes. And maybe, um, you know, the regulations or requirements uh, to the state and local government and the federal government for the travel restrictions, all of that may have to be changing based on the variant that's in the area. So you can see that there's a lot of crazy stuff involved and a lot of complexity involved when these multiple ex uh, evolving variants are out there. Let me see if I got them all. Oh, there's this whole notion, right, of the um, uh, COVID-19 passport, which means you've got, or your vaccination passport, I should say. So you've got vaccinated and now you have an app that you can go to a theater or a restaurant or an airline and show them proof that you're vaccinated. Well, suddenly there might be requirements for multiple different kinds of boosters and different variants in different schedules. It makes it even more important to have an effective updated vaccine passport so you can show all the different ways that you are protected against that. So maybe you can, it can keep us from having to lock down again. Who knows? But that's additional complexity out there. 
So requirements, travel restrictions, uh, the rules and guidance um, will change in the, your region, the time stamps, because you know, some of these variants might say, look, you got your vaccine last year, but now this new variant is going to require you to come back. Maybe it comes back on a three-month schedule or a yearly schedule or every six-month schedule to get a booster because of the new kinds of variants. So suddenly you're trying to uh, manage an increasingly complex schedule of when things have to be done. Anyway, with all of that, I just want to flag the fact there's a lot of additional complexity when there's more than one variant out there and we're experiencing the fact that there's emerging variants out there. So we're going to have to be prepared. Thank you for joining.